So here's a nice little recap. So if side A was greater or equal to B, we only get one triangle that's possible. If A was less than B, there's three possibilities. It could be a right angle triangle where A is equal to B sine A. If A was less than B sine A, we get no triangles. But if A was greater than B sine A, we get two triangles, this being the ambiguous case. So this is going to be our little check. We're going to first see if A is less than B, and then if it is, if A is greater than B sine A, we're going to have the ambiguous case. Otherwise, we'll either have no triangles at all, or only one triangle. So here's our first example. Solve for triangle ABC if angle A is equal to 29.3 degrees, side B is equal to 20.5, and side A is equal to 12.8. So our first question we need to ask is, how many triangles? Okay, is this a case of the ambiguous case, or am I able to just draw one type of triangle? So first check is A less than B. Well, A is 12.8 centimeters, B is 20.5, so that's true. So now we'll see what side A is relative to B sine A. So A is, who knows, compared to B sine A. Let's plug both of these things, or all of the values, into here, and we'll see what the sine is here. So A is equal to 12.8, B is equal to 20.5, and uh, angle A is equal to 29.3. So let's see what 20.5 times the sine of 29.3 equals. So 20.5 times sine of 29.3. We get 10. Almost right on, actually. So pretty close to 10, if not right on. So we can say that because this equals approximately 10, 12.8 is going to be greater than 10. Or we get this case right here. So we are actually going to have two triangles uh, or the ambiguous case. So let's draw these out. Anytime you have the ambiguous case, the diagrams will look very similar. I'll have my line at the bottom, I'll have a side that goes up like this, and then I'm going to have uh, one arm that comes down and can attach there to make one triangle, and I'll have another arm that can come down and attach right here, making that other triangle. I'll form this isosceles triangle. Side or angle A will be over here. Angle B will either be here, I'll call this B1, or here, I'll call this B2. And uh, we'll just call that point up there angle C. Angle A was 29.3 degrees. Side B was 20.5 centimeters. And side A was 12.8. So I got a 12.8 right here. And I've got a 12.8 right here. So our goal here is we want to solve the triangle, or basically solve for all the given angles and all the given sides. Uh, so let's start with the first triangle being this bigger one. And we'll solve for all those angles and all those sides. Let me just redraw it over here. OK. So uh, I have it redrawn right here. So let's start by solving for angle B. We're going to start with the sine ratio because I have a corresponding uh, angle side pair. So sine of 29.3 over side 12.8 is going to equal the sine of angle B over 20.5. Rearranging for sine B here, I'll do a couple of cross multiply steps at once. So I'm going to have 20.5 times sine 29.3 and then I'll divide by 12.8. And now I want to get 
uh, sine inverse of all of this stuff here. Get out my calculator. So sine inverse 20.5 times the sine of 29.3 and then divided by 12.8. we get 51.6. So I'll round this to the one decimal place. Okay, so 51.6 degrees goes here. Can you guess already what this angle will be in there? I'll give you a hint, it's 180 minus 51.6. Shh, but don't tell anyone else. Okay, so now that I have uh, angle 51.6 here, notice how the next thing I can solve is angle C up here because I know 180 uh, minus 29.3 minus 51.6 will have to give me that angle. So I'll get my calculator back out and that's exactly what we'll do. 180 minus 29.3 minus 51.6 99.1 degrees. I can do that little calculation uh, right down, right over here, just so you can. All right. Last but not least, we need to find side C. So again, I can use uh, sine law. So I'll use my original ratio here, sine 29.3 all over 12.8 is equal to. And then I know my angle, sine 99.1 over side C. I don't know what that is. I'm going to cross multiply and I'm going to divide. So I'll do that all in one step here. So I'm going to do 12.8 times sine 99.1 and then I'll have to divide by sine 29.3. So I'll get my calculator out one last time. We have 12.8 multiplied by sine of 99.1. There we go. Divided by sine of 29.3. And I get 25.8. approximated it, and I think we're talking about centimeters. And there you have it. That's my solution for the big triangle. Now I can do the exact same thing for the smaller triangle. Uh, I'll speed up the process here just a little bit. So let me redraw out this smaller triangle. And again, we already know uh, what angle B is, 51.6 in the big triangle, so this will make it easier for us to solve for angle B in the small triangle. So let me just write this out. There's our triangle drawn out, and I've even added a little extension here uh, just to show that this outside angle we know is 51.6. So we can calculate this angle B here just by figuring out. So angle B is going to equal 180, but subtract 51.6. We're trying to figure out. Uh, a sine ratio that is the same as the sine ratio before but with an angle in quadrant 2. So 180 minus 51.6 well 180 minus 50 is 130 subtract another 1 128.4 so we get this is 128.4 I can solve for angle C again by doing a 180 minus those other two angles that are there. So angle C is going to equal 180 subtract the 128.4. Hint, I already know that that is 51.6. And then I'm going to subtract 29.3. Well, 51.6 subtract 30 is 21.6, and then I'm going to add 7 more. So 
22.3. Okay, so I figure out that this is 22.3 degrees. And so my only sine law question or problem that I need to do here is now to figure out side AB, or we can call that side C. So I write out my sine law here, sine 29.3 over 12.8. I feel like I've written that out a few times now. Is equal to uh, sine of 22.3. over side C. Again, I cross multiply here, so 12.8 times sine of 22.3 and then divide by sine of 29.3 equals 9.9. .9. So uh, does this make sense or is this reasonable? Well, yeah. Uh, the C value up here was 25.8. My C value for this question should be much smaller as 9.9 .9, approximately centimeters. And there you have it. That is an example of the ambiguous case where you have two different possible triangles. A lot of work? Yes. Uh, but hopefully you get double the marks because there are two questions that you need to solve. So the ambiguous case does turn up in a lot of word problems and uh, here's one that I want you to try. The light from a rotating offshore beacon can illuminate effectively up to a distance of 250 meters. A point on the shore is 500 meters from the beacon. From this point, the sight line to the beacon makes an angle of 20 degrees with the shoreline. And I've shown you sort of a diagram of what this could look like. So what length of shoreline to the nearest meter is effectively illuminated by the beacon? I'll give you a hint. Uh, a light or a lighthouse or a beacon or uh, something of that nature uh, sort of illuminates in a circle. Right? And it says here that it can effectively illuminate up to 250 meters. So I want you to think of this question like this. What if I created a circle from the beacon outwards? Just like this. And let's say the radius of this circle is 250 meters because that is how far the beacon can go. So your question here is how much of the shoreline is affected by the light or how much of the shoreline does the beacon light up? Maybe you can now look at this diagram and draw yourself a diagram to answer the question. So try this out on your own and bring it to class and see if you got the right answer. Until next time, we'll see you later.